Hello and welcome to my WWE 2K22 match simulations for Survivor Series, which is later tonight. Starting with, as you might be able to tell, the triple threat match for the United States Championship. Now, unfortunately, War Games matches are not in this game. So I'll only be simulating the three regular matches that are on the undercard. Starting, like I say, with this one. And I'll be doing it all in one video. In the past, I've uploaded them as, like, separate videos. However, um, time constraints are just meaning that it's probably going to be more beneficial to me to just... Excuse me, upload this as one video with three matches on it. So the almighty Bobby Lashley, the first challenger for Seth Rollins United States Championship, is now in the ring. And if you want to hear my predictions, because this is obviously who the video game thinks is going to win. But if you want to hear my predictions, they're over on WWE Baser. The link will be in the end cards. You know, the end screen link thingy-majigs. So uh, check this video out and then go check that one out. I greatly appreciate it. Now here comes the other challenger. The man who for some reason cashed in his money in the bank on the United States Championship. And then and did it as a surprise cash in and still managed to lose for a mid-card title. So some people be saying that he's a Vince boy and now that Vince is gone, he's uh falling down the uh, list of priorities pretty rapidly. And I think maybe his booking in this match could give us an indication of that. There's a strong chance Davy is just here to take the pin in this match to keep Seth and Bobby looking strong. You know, that's definitely a possibility, isn't it? It's also a possibility that he wins. <laughs> you know, and they've been swerving us this whole time with the falling from grace thing. I don't know. So, here comes the champ. The main champion in the men's division on the men's singles division on Monday Night Raw. In fact, the men's division, period. Because the Usos are predominantly on SmackDown with the tag titles as well at the moment. But yeah, here's, uh, here's the champ, Seth Rollins. He's not long had the title. Could he be in line for a short... Title defense, uh, you know, title reign, I should say. Or can he hold on to the gold in this triple threat match? It's only one way to find out. And unfortunately, look for me, that's not by watching this video. But if you're curious who the game thinks will win, which the fact that you're still here, three entrances in, suggests you probably intend to watch the match, then at least you'll find that out here. And then later on, you can watch the show yourself Seth Rollins getting a lovely reception from the audience here <laughs> right all three superstars are out here let's get this show on the road shall we is that all day and then not today as Jewel and Jance for Austin Theory, that's pretty fun. I've never heard that on actual WWE TV, but I don't I don't watch the product week in, week out by any means, so I probably missed that one. That's a pretty fun little chant. Okay. So who's gonna leave with the United States Championship? Bobby Lashley goes after Theory immediately. Rollins tries to grab him from behind, but Lashley just back elbows him. And now Theory's not going to get involved as Lashley takes down Rollins. He's going to wait for Lashley to be on his knees and then strike down. He's not daft, he's Austin Theory, I mean, except when it comes to Money in the Bank passions. But speaking of not daft, look at Seth Rollins just chilling out in the corner, biding his time, not getting involved while these two go at it. Yeah, let, let the two challengers beat each other to a pulp. 
why get involved? Like, you can just pick the bones as the champion. You're supposed to be at a disadvantage as the champion in a triple threat match, but Seth Rollins is using the rule set to his advantage. Theory is not, though. Theory is getting launched, and now so is Seth Rollins. Oh, no, he's not. He counters it into a DDT. I saw Lashley hit that move on Theory and was like, no, sir, I don't think I want to taste any of that. And now Rollins is in control of this one. Oh, ripcord knee. And now we're we're going to roll to the outside for a little bit of a spike. Super kick to Lashley by Rollins. This could be his opportunity. Austin Theory is outside the ring. Can Seth Rollins put Bobby Lashley away? Frog splash. Austin Theory needs to recover outside, out there and quickly. Because Seth Rollins is going to try and put Bobby Lashley away in the near future, I think. But no, Theory is back in the ring now. Rollins went for the kick to the gut. Lashley caught it and just ran through Rollins with a clothesline. But now Austin Theory's in to take it to Lashley. And again, Rollins using this opportunity to recuperate. And now we're going to see Theory and Rollins go at it while Lashley's down. Not for long, I imagine. Lashley doesn't tend to stay down for long. But while he is, these two will battle. Theory sends Rollins into the corner. Runs in. Oh, runs into a back elbow. And now Rollins fighting his way out of the corner. And Lashley can take a minute to flex. While Seth Rollins hits a German suplex. That rhymed unintentionally. And there's a belly to back suplex by Rollins. Really taking charge in this match. I mean, it's for his championship. He needs to be proactive here. Oh, and he's just proactively been speared by Bobby Lashley. who hasn't noticed Theory getting up to his feet. And so he gets a zero count as Theory breaks up the pin. And now Lashley not pleased with Theory here. But Theory's had a moment to recuperate while Lashley's been fighting Rollins. Oh, trips the leg. Now Rollins trying to capitalise, but Theory saw it coming, but then Rollins follows up with an enziguri. And a stomp to the back of the arm as well. Now what's Lashley got in mind for Seth Rollins here? We'll never find out, because Rollins fights out of it with some elbows to the midsection. There's a kick, there's a backhand shot. Look at this, faster than I can call it, Rollins is hitting these moves. Falcon Arrow. She go for the pin, I've heard that no one kicks out of the Falcon Arrow. But now, look at this, Rollins. Curb stomp to Lashley. And he's going for the pin, but again, Austin Theory's in the ring, but Bobby Lashley was too close to the ropes anyway. A rare mistake by the architect. And now, uh, sort of a double mistake, honestly. But now look at Theory taking it to Rollins. Lashley is out over there, having been stomped. Fall away slam. Now Lashley trying to recuperate. <laughs> Showing the disrespect to Austin Theory. And Theory is not pleased about that. Oh, and I forget what he calls that, but it's high impact for sure. Two. Oh, and he almost put Lashley away with it. Lashley just about kicks out at two and nine tenths. Now what's Theory got in mind for Lashley here? Rollins recuperating on the outside. Theory's going to have to be quick. Whatever he does, he went for a double axe handle. Lashley blocked it. And a pendulum backbreaker to Theory. And now a chop block to Rollins as well. And going after the leg. He doesn't appreciate being stomped. And he's going to try and injure the leg and prevent it from happening again. Smart strategy by Bobby Lashley. Can't deny it. Snake eyes to Theory. But now what's... Oh, Rollins! Oh, I think he's going for a pedigree. Lashley blocks it. The very last second shot and clothesline. And now Theory should have kept his eye on the ball. Uh-oh. He's in the hurt lock. Now if Theory taps out, Rollins loses his title, which is why he's gone over and broken that up. Yeah, Rollins says, not this time. As Lashley drops Theory with a neck breaker. But again, wasn't focused on Rollins. Still focused on trying to put Theory away. And that's come back to bite him here. Oh, never mind. There's a spear to Rollins. And now Theory's in danger of losing this one without being pinned. And Rollins could lose his US title. No, he kicks out at two. Lashley can't believe it, but he's got to stay on offense while he's got the upper hand. And now he's going for the hurt lock on Rollins as well. Theory just about recovering on the outside. Can he break it up in time? He does. Oh, boy. That's a couple of times Lashley has been close to winning with the hurt lock. He's had it locked in on both his opponents. Oh, 
Rollins breaks free. Morris is getting mine for Lashley here. Neck breaker. No, he lets go. Oh, strike to the back of the neck with the forearm. Now Theory. Belly to back suplex. Get out the way, ref. And a standing shooting star press. Beautiful technique by Theory. Oh, he goes for the second one. And he regrets it. Rollins gets the knees up. See, Rollins just hobble on the knees a little bit there. Lashley's been targeting the legs of Rollins ever since he hit that curb stomp. So we've had some pretty close calls here. We've had two... Uh, Two hurt locks locked in. Oh, another pedigree attempt. And again, blocked. This time by Theory. We've also had a, uh, a stump attempt. We've had Theory get close to beating Lashley. And we've had Rollins attempt pedigrees on both his opponents, but not hit it on either. Now Rollins counters the uh, suplex attempt by Theory. Oh, and he went for a stomp on Lashley, but Theory just saved Lashley's bacon. And look at this for some uh, gratitude. Over to the Argentine backbreaker and now into the pin. Rollins just going to watch it happen. No, he he waited and broke it up at two. He's almost mocking the fans there, thinking they were going to get a Bobby Lashley win. And instead, they don't. Now look at this. Both men focused on Lashley after Rollins hits the stomp. And now Austin Theory in the corner. I don't know where Seth Rollins thought Theory had gone, but he went for the pin nonetheless. Didn't pay off. Bella to back suplex on Theory. This has been a good triple threat match, to the surprise of no one. I would expect the uh, real life one tonight to be good as well. Oh no, Lashley looks angry. You don't want that, you wouldn't like him when he's angry. Oh, DDT by Rollins. And the ripcord knee as well to follow up. Now finally turns his attention to Lashley, and Lashley was ready for him. Oh no, goes to the scoop slam, Rollins down behind. Reverse DDT. And now goes to the pin while Theory's on the outside. One, two. Oh my god, he got him with a reverse DDT. I've never seen Rollins win a match with that move. Where did that come from? Well, Seth Rollins retains. And here's the referee with his championship title. With his belt, we're allowed to say now. Thank you, Daddy Trips. But yeah, who'd have seen that particular finish come in? Anyway, let's get on with the next match. So, the next match. It's going to be a little bit different in terms of dynamics on the game than it is in real life. Which may become apparent in the very near future for, for you guys. But I'll explain it when we come to it. But first, enter in the ring. I enter the arena, accompanied by Damien Priest, Rhea Ripley and Dominic Mysterio. But we're only crediting Dominic Mysterio for some reason on the, the card at the bottom. Finn Balor. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Struck from Rhea Ripley. Okay, I think we may have just found our thumbnail. Holy cow. That's a great thumbnail. Honestly, kind of wish I'd switched Rhea Ripley and Dominic Mysterio's positions. But I've talked about this on the channel before. When I simulate matches on this game, I hit random. So I don't even choose where people start off the match standing. So I have ve I have literally no input, and I, I, you know, in terms of how the match goes, because every little difference like that does affect how the match goes. Not in a way I can predict, but it still affects it. And I even did that with Finn Balor's managers. Um, so yeah, I kind of wish we'd had uh, Rhea Ripley in Dominic's position though for that thumbnail shot. Oh well, it'll do. It'll do. He does some thumbnail-worthy poses and faces, doesn't he? Mr. Balor. There's another one. <laughs> and another one. Making sure he does his uh, gun salute lots of times because it's a battle of the former Bullet Club leaders. Dominic Mysterio and David Bruce being like, yeah, everyone cheer for Finn Balor. Why aren't you cheering? Dominic's like, why aren't you cheering for me? <laughs> so, Finn Balor's opponent this evening. As the ring announcer and timekeeper get into a battle. Here he is. AJ Styles, as you can see in the background there, being accompanied by... Just Mia Yim. 
And that's for a couple of reasons. The first one is, we're only allowed a total of four managers. But the second and more significant one that led me to the decision to outnumber AJ Styles and Mia Yim here is Gallows and Anderson out in the game. <laughs> so, yeah. Just like War Games matches out in the game, so I'm not going to be doing some... I did... So I'm not, I'll finish the sentence. I'm not going to be doing some sort of smaller version. I'm just not going to do the match. I did deliberate doing, like... I think the women's match, for example... Oh, is it the men's? I think one of them. I think it might be the men's match, actually. Yeah, it's the men's. There's only four off each team on the game, I believe, because I don't think Mitch Holland's on the game, and I don't think Solo Sokoa's on the game. So I could have done it as, like, a 4v4 match, but you can't even put it in a Hell in a Cell or a cage or anything, I don't think, 4v4. So it just wouldn't have the same feel to it. So I decided just not to. Um... And the women's, even more so, all 10 women are on the game, I believe. So I'd have to choose someone off each team to drop, because you can only have up to eight people in a match on this game. And then it's not in the cage, and not the double ring, and not, you know, the same rules at all. So I just decided not to do it, and just do the three matches I can do. That's how I normally do it, anyway. I only simulate the matches that are, are able to be done on the game. Anyway, I have killed enough time for AJ's entrance to be over, and now he's chopping... Finn Balor in the chest, which I'm sure Balor is loving. Oh, look at that! Springboard Moonsault! And goes for the pin off that. One, two, and Balor kicks out two. That's early for a two count and uh, the Judgment Day looking concerned at ringside, especially with Ripley. With Dom yeah, Dominic's not looking pleased either. Damien Priest looking quite stoic. He believes in his leader, even if no one else does. Snap suplex. See, the back into it. Now Damien Priest comes alive. He's like the the, uh, the positive cheerleader at ringside. The other two are there to uh, let Balor know when he does something wrong. Oh, I thought he was going for the coup de grace already, but no, he drops the knee across the face. That could have been a very short outing for AJ Styles. Now Balor going for the pin after punching AJ in the head a few times and gets a two count back. So it's quite early in the match, but both men have already had a near fall. This could be a quick one. Yeah, the, the, that can sometimes be the case when the rivalry is so intense, you know, they, they forget about, you know, having a good match and balancing a match and doing the good wrestling, and they just beat the hell out of each other, and that's, that's what seems to be happening in this one. Oh, AJ looked like he slipped a bit there, but he still made contact with the cross body block to the outside, so no harm, no foul, he seems to be okay. Oh, maybe not anymore though. He's just been... Oh, there's a standing coup de grace by Finn Balor. Standing double foot stomp. And then a dragon screw leg whip by AJ makes him regret it. Five. Miriam keeping an eye on the judgment day, making sure they stay on their side of the ring. She's not getting involved. Belly to back suplex. No, Balor backflips out of it. And now he's going to fire AJ Styles into the corner, into the Judgment Day home corner. And he's just going to position Styles where he wants him. And shotgun drop kick into the corner. Judgment Day are pleased with that one. Well, two of them are. Dominic didn't react at all. That's two. Oh, AJ kicked out at two. Bella can't quite believe it. But come on, Finn. You've still got one more weapon in your arsenal. Uh, well, you've still got a few more weapons, actually, but... You've got a big one that you use to put away most people. But he took too long getting up to the top rope. And now look at this. AJ Styles throws Finn Balor from the top rope. And now Balor heading to the outside. Springboard 450 splash. Was going to get up but then was like, no, you know what? I should go for a pin here too. Oh, Balor kicks out. And now AJ can't believe it. But again, you still have a couple more weapons in your arsenal. A couple more tricks up your sleeve. Phenomenal forearm, but no, Balor got out of the way just in time. It's fair to say that could have been the end of the match if uh, Styles would have hit that phenomenal forearm. Oh, high roundhouse kick. I think he got Balor in the throat there. No, he's got Balor up on his shoulders. And snake eyes into the corner. Oh, Balor kicks out though, as in kicks out of the corner. It wasn't a pin. No, he scoops AJ up. Fall away slam. No, AJ lands on his feet. Finn Balor back, back elbows. This has been a great back and forth match. Forearm by Finn Balor. Uh-oh. 
1916. Now goes to the pin off the 1916. That could be all she wrote. One, two. Ooh, these near falls are getting nearer and nearer. Balor not pleased with the ref, but it's not the ref's fault. AJ kicked out. Gonna do more to put him away. Pele kick. Because both men have the Pele kick in their repertoire. Different executions, but same principle. There's the coup de grace. No messing about. Straight in for the kill. One, two, and three. Finn Balor picks up the win over AJ Styles. And no Judgment Day shenanigans. No Mia Yim shenanigans either, but Judgment Day is more surprising, let's be honest. Alright, I guess there's nothing else to do now than uh, move on to the final match of this video. Let's go. Alright, so. Time for the SmackDown Women's Championship. And here comes the challenger on her tank. As is traditional. What does TCB stand for? Someone let me know in the comments. I actually don't know that. Why is that on the front of her tank? I actually don't know what the reason for that is. I'm trying to think. No, no idea. I can't. I can't think why it might be. But uh, anyway, very quiet music. Like the music is on, but it's so quiet compared with the tank that we can't even hear it. But all right. Means I'm not getting a copyright strike for this particular entrance theme, doesn't it? Chelsea's having some fun in her tank on the way to the ring, but she's going to need one hell of a game face once she gets between those ropes with Ronda Rousey. If she wants to have any chance of taking the SmackDown Women's Championship. I can hear the music now that that tank's been shut down. Still not loud, but I can hear it. Okay, so shots is in the ring. There's probably not going to be a tank involved in Ronda Rousey's entrance. Probably going to be a bit more no nonsense, a bit more all business. But you know what? It's wrestling. Everyone's entitled to a bit of nonsense if they so wish. During the entrances, you got to get your game face on once the bell goes. Yeah, look at Ronda Rousey just marching to the ring. Championship over her shoulder. Game face well and truly on. Okay. So, I think it's about time. I think Ronda Rousey is in... Is I was going to say he's in no rush, but the opposite is not in no rush to get this one underway. Because we need to do the introductions first, I believe. Still love that title. Of the of all the titles that are just the big logo, the SmackDown Women's is my favourite. I just really like how the blue background pops. Big fan. Big fan of that belt. So yeah, there's the introduction of Shotzi. Here's the introduction of Ronda. She's still yet to smile. Will she smile here once she hears her name? Nope. <laughs> nope, no smiling. Look at the game face on Ronda Rousey. Her facial expression has not changed since she walked through the curtain. It is just a constant scowl. But Shotzi's demeanor has changed. She had fun during her entrance, as she likes to. But now, it's showtime. It's time to get down to business. So who's going to leave Survivor Series with the SmackDown Women's Championship? At least on WWE 2K22. Let's find out. Rousey off to a fast start. Sending Shotzi into the corner. Deciding, no, I want you face first in the corner. Oh, bounces her off the turnbuckle. And then a German suplex. 
Chelsea needs to not let Ronda take full charge super early in this match. There's a knee to the side of the head. And now she goes to work on the arm already. Chelsea, you've got to get back on the offense soon. Ronda Rousey could make real quick work of someone if they don't make a good start. And so far, that's what's happening. Stomping away, but Chelsea dodges the stomp. Here we go. Belly to back suplex. That's what you needed. I'm not rooting for Chelsea, but I would like to see a nice competitive match. So we needed Chelsea to get some offense in early. Otherwise, it was going to be a very short final match of the episode, of the video. Now, it's a bit more back and forth at this point. Shotzi making a good account of herself now. Jawbreaker. Oh, and Ronda Rousey responds with a jawbreaker. Anything you can do. And those body blows are so damaging. And then back to the arm again goes Ronda Rousey. And now look at this. With the ground of arm. No, Shotzi rolls through. She's done her homework. She knows what Rousey's capable of and what she likes to do. And now going after the legs of Ronda Rousey. Interesting strategy. Oh, springboard. Hurricane Rana. Oh, and then the nice head spring up to her feet again. Great athleticism by Shotzi. And now just running, literally running rings around Rousey to keep her off her game. And standing sliced bread and goes for the pin. One, two. She's got a, oh my God, I thought Shotzi had just won the SmackDown Women's Championship with, with, with relatively ease. With relative ease, I should say. But uh, no, no dice just yet. But now she's going to the top rope. Rousey tries to roll out of range. Oh, but she kept rolling and Shotzi got her on the back with that senton. One, two, three. Shotzi picks up the win and the SmackDown Women's Championship. Oh my God. Wow. Okay, so let me know in the comments which of these results from this video you agree with and disagree with and why. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And subscribe if you're new here. Share with your friends if you think they would enjoy also. It would be greatly appreciated. But for now, all I have left to say is thank you very much for watching. As always, I've been Ibeza, you've been amazing, and I'll see you next time.